Hello guys, my name is Mfwan Kona Lamin. Welcome to our second lesson, Python Crash Codes. Uh, in this lesson, we'll be taking a look at dictionaries, tuples, comparison operators, if, else, and else if statements, built-in functions. We'll also take a look at creating modules and importing modules. Of course, in our previous lesson, in lesson one, uh, we were looking at basic mathematical operations, data types, integers, floats, strings, boolean values, list, loops, while loops, for loops, and we did take a look at functions. So in the subsequent lesson, which is lesson, lesson two included, we will combine uh, the things which you have learned in, previous, in the previous lesson, which is lesson one. Uh, as we go on and create a bigger pro, a bigger pro, program. So we, uh, in this lesson, basically, we we will be practical applying the things or the the things we are learning here. So stay tuned for this lesson. Okay, let us get started. Imagine we are given a mathematical problem such as, let's say they have given you two coordinates. The first one is A, which is 1,2, and B, which is 5,6. And they ask you to calculate the gradient. Of course, we know that the gradient of a line is equal to Y2 minus Y1 divide by x2 minus x1 so to calculate the gradient we we the first thing we need we need to put these values in a container so what we can do maybe the hard way we can just say y1 and and then put maybe we've decided that uh, for A, for A, we are going to have X and Y, since this, these are coordinates. So we are going to have X1 and Y1. And then for B, we are going to have X, Y, but this one are going to be X2 and Y1 and Y2 such that we can now use this formula to calculate the gradient so basically now we can say now for y1 we're going to take this coordinates which is now for y2 we're going to take this which is six so we're going to say six minus this is y2 six and then minus y1. y1 here is 2. Minus 2. Divide by. Then y2. We have y2 here which is 5. Minus y1. We have x2 which is 5. Minus x1 which is, which is 1. Okay. So now we can calculate the gradient here. So this, this, this is going to be equal to 6 minus 2, which is 4, divide by 5 minus 1, which is, which is 4. And then now 4, 4 divided by 4 is going to give us 1. So the gradient is 1. So what we can do, the hard way, we can say maybe x1 and we are going to assign the variable, we are going to assign a value which is x1 is 1 and we are going to say y1 and we are going to assign a value which is 2. And for x2, we are going to assign a value which is 5 and y2 we are going to assign a value which is 6 
so this is going to be the coordinates of a uh, coordinates of a which is one comma two and these are going to be coordinates of b which are five comma six so now we can calculate the gradient maybe let us call it m which is the gradient and let us create a function def gradient and we are going to take x1 y1 x2 y2 and then we are going to compute the gradient let us just say return and then let us compute this let's say y y2 minus y1 divide by x2 minus x1 so now we can use this function to calculate the gradient so the gradient which is going to be m is and then we are going to use this function gradient and then we are going to put x1 y1 x2 y2 so let us print the gradient therefore the gradient is gradient and then the gradient is let us print this out so now we have the gradient here is 1.0 of course they, we, we they have returned the number as a floating point number of course this is the same as one so this is the hard way of doing things of course we can achieve this using tuples or we can use a uh, we can use dictionaries let's start by using tuples okay let us comment this let us say we have decided to use tuples for tuples we are going to say x maybe for the first coordinates this is a which is going to be 1 comma 2 and we are going to say x1 y1 and we are going to assign values here 1 comma 2 what comma 2 of course we can achieve the same thing uh, using list so to create a tuple is very easy so there are two ways to create a tuple the first way is just to use round brackets for example let us say we have values maybe for we have elements from one to six we can just create a tuple num and then put brackets one two three four five six this is the first way of creating a tuple the second way let us say num2 we can just say tuple using this constructor function tuple and then say one two three four five six let us test this let us print the type print type num let me call this num tap num tuple num tuple 2 num tuple and let us print num tuple 2 let us print this out on the screen okay we have an error okay let me fix this so here we're supposed to use, let us comment this out for now. And let us print it again. So here we've got 
Here it is written tuple. This is the first print. Uh, this is the first print we are using, and this is the, going to be the second. So here I've got uh, these values dis displayed as tuple. Basically, a tuple. Ah, oh, let me maybe print the type again. Type num tuple two. Okay, both of these. Uh, this list are tuples. Basically, a tuple is a list which is immutable. What do I mean by that? So, there are basic operations which you can do in list that you cannot do in, in tuples. For example, in list, you can add values by using... So, if you have a list, list var, this is how we created a list last time, you can append if you can say list val, you can add item by saying append. Maybe append two. Or let us append maybe three values. One, two, three. So maybe this is 24. And this is 72 so we can add values we can also remove values in a list in a tuple we cannot do these operations of course there are many there are there are functions which you can use that are found in a list that you can use in tuples so in a tuple just like a list you can values are allowed to repeat so you can have three three but once you have uh, assigned the uh, once you have assigned the, the values, you cannot change them, and they have a definite order, so the order is unchangeable. Okay, now that we understand the, what a tuple is, let us come back to our previous lesson. So before we go there, what makes a tuple a tuple is not this round brackets, but it is the it is this it is it, it it is separating these elements of values with comma. Let's take for instance, let us say you have maybe num tuple 3 and you have got 12, 34, 55, 66, 77. So this is a tuple. This is a tuple. Let us print the type here. Print type num tuple 3 let us print it out so as you can say here the, it is written tuple so this is a tuple so what makes a tuple a tuple is not the round brackets but it is separating these values with comma so now in light of this new evidence we can now come back to our lesson so instead of assigning values a B, we can just do this. We can just say for A, let us copy the coordinates of A. Maybe you can say A, then we can assign values here 1, 2. And then we can unpack the tuple into X1 and y1 by just doing this so we call this unpacking we can also say b let us copy the coordinates of b 5 comma 6 And we can just assign, create a tuple of 5, comma 6. And then if you want x2 and y2, we can just unpack b. So now we can compute the gradient. So we can just remove these comments. 
and calculate the gradient. Maybe let us change some few things here. Let us make some minor changes here. Let us say maybe we change here, we put two, it's going to be 12, and maybe leave the rest. Or let us put six here. So now, so what we're expecting now, so that we can calculate the gradient, remember, this is the formula for calculating the gradient. This is the formula for calculating the gradient. So with these coordinates we have, we can calculate the gradient. So what we are expecting for M, we're expecting, we're expecting A, for Y2, we're expecting six minus, okay, Y2, we're expecting six, minus y1 for y1 we're expecting 2 divide and for x2 we're expecting 6 minus 12 so now after computing this we are going to get 6 minus 2 and we are going to get 4. And then 12 minus 6. So here we are expecting a negative number. Negative 6. So if you simplify, we simplify this and we get 2. And we divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 3 divided by 2. Uh, 6 divided by 2 <coughs> is 3. So this is 2 over 3. Okay. Let us compute the gradient here to see the answer. Okay. To get, let us get the decimal value here so that we can get the correct answer. Okay. Basically, 2 divide, 2 divide by 3 we're expecting 0 0.66666. So, so we're, going, we're expecting a negative number that follows by 0 0.6666 as decimal. Let us compute this. And let us clear the screen and run. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't actually change the values here. Let me put 12 and let me put 6 here and let me run. So we here we've got the correct answer, negative 0 0.66666. So this is going to be our gradient. Of course, we can write it as a fraction as negative 2 over 3. Okay. This is how we can manipulate tuples. And, and this is a good example of how to use tuples. Of course, a situation may arise whereby you have a tuple, maybe, let me call this prime tuple, and these are prime numbers. We've got a tuple of prime numbers, Two, three, five, seven, eleven. We've got a tuple of prime numbers. Since you cannot append or you cannot add values in a tuple, to overcome this problem or this dilemma, you can just change it into a list, append the value, and then change it into a tuple. Okay, let us do that. So to change this prime list and then i'm going to just write list and then i'm going to put, put here prime tuple so now let me print this print 
prime list clear the screen so we've got here prime list the square, the square bracket is for list so now i can do some operations in this prime list such as adding another prime number print list dot append maybe let me add 13. now i can print this again so we've got another prime number here which we've added 13. so we can change it back into a tuple let me write changed tuple and then write tuple and then put here prime list and then let me print it out print changed list changed tuple and let me print changed tuple so now we can see the change tuple now we have a tuple so this is how we overcome some of the problems or the dilemmas we have with tuples so tuples comes in handy in many ways of course there are many things we can do with up with tuple for example you can just get the first value just saying print maybe let's write change tuple and to get the, the value in the zero index you can just print it out clear the screen So we have two here. We can see the change tuple, the first, the first, the, the first value, which is zero index, zero, one, two, three, four, five. The first value which is zero index. We're able to get two here. And we can get the last value, just like we were doing with the list. So we can guess it, get the last value, maybe. Let us write negative one. And let us print it out. The last value is 13. Of course, we can slice tuples. Maybe I want to slice from one, maybe to four, from zero to four. And let us clear. So here I've got two, three, five, seven. So I am not including 11 and 13. Okay. Of course, we can get the length of a tuple by just printing length. Let me write change tuple and then print out. So the length is six. Here we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five. Of course, here when I'm counting, I'm getting five, but uh, I think the length is starting from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the index form is starting from 0, but the counting is starting from 1. Okay, this is what you need to know about tuples. Of course, you can just go online and search uh, functions that are related with tuples. You can learn that there are some of these functions that are out there, and there are many applications of tuples. Okay, guys. Thank you for staying tuned for this lesson and uh, we are going to create a dictionary next. Okay guys, let us take a look at dictionaries. Basically, a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. A dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. So, the easiest way to create a dictionary, we can have maybe here, student, info info and then we can have we can have the name of the student name 
This is going to be the key. And then the value. And then we are going to have Pisa Lamini. And then we are going to have, let us put comma. We are going to have the age. And we are going to put 27. So, put comma, and then we're going to have maybe the class, we're going to have maybe grade 12. So, this is how we create a dictionary. This is the key and this is the value so a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs it's more like a dictionary the dictionary you use maybe english dictionary that you normally use so when you are opening a dictionary you're going to have the name which you're looking for maybe in this case you're looking for the name like name and then you're going to find that the, the definition or the explanation is lamini or maybe you're looking for the for the word good and then you're going to find the explanation what it means to be good so a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. So now we can print. Let us print to see the output. You student student info student info so here We've got name Pisa Lamini, age 27, class grade 12. So this is our dictionary. We can also see the type. Let us print the type. So here we can just write type and print student info. Let us print. So we've got here, this is an object of, uh, this is a dictionary, a dictionary object. So here we can see here we've got dictionary. So now that we know this, let us, let us comment it out. We can perform many functions in a dictionary. For example, we can use this method to get only the keys in a dictionary. We can just print the keys only student info dot keys and let us print it out so now we have the keys only name age class we can also print the values only student info dot values and let us print that out so now got values yeah the values we have we've got visa Lamini 27 grade 12 these are the values and we've got the keys so we what another thing we can do we can print maybe items let us use student in dot items let us print it out so when you use items the method item we get uh, the key value pairs as tuples so we can see here we've got the key value pairs as tuples inside a list. So there are other methods that are associated with the with dictionary. For example, we can copy maybe let's say user, and then we are going to copy 
student info into user student info dot copy let us copy it now we can print we can print out print let us print user and let us clear the screen and run so here ah oh, maybe let me write here user so that you can see user yeah let's clear the screen and just print out so as you can see we've got here user i've got name is a so we have copied the student info dictionary into the user variable another thing we can do we can get the value of a we can on we can we can get it, the value of a dictionary by just printing print and then say student or let us use user user dot get and then print the write the key name maybe here we've got name is the key and let us print it out so here we're able to get visa lamine okay let us comment this out and this so another way of printing out we can just say print and then say student uh, let us use user and then put uh, square brackets and write age so this is the second way of printing out if you don't want to use get and okay there's an error here in the list of key value pairs oh we're starting with a capital letter it has use a capital oh let us just change the capital letter there into a small letter h and let us clear and let us print so i've got 27 so another thing let us say maybe we forgot to add the uh, maybe let us say the country of the user and now we can add another key value pairs of in the dictionary let us say what we want to add maybe let us write user and then let us write country and then and let us assign the name of the country of the user So write Kingdom of Eswatini. Kingdom of Eswatini. So now maybe let us print user and run. So now we can see that we have added the country here kingdom of a certain in our dictionary okay these are the method that are associated with creating dictionary okay we can iterate uh, in inside the dictionary by using the for loop by saying for key maybe in i or for key in value map in v and for for key v in maybe user dot items and then we can just print and here we're going to print it and then dot format and we are going to print 
are going to put k which is the, for for the key and we're going to put v which is for the value and now we can print that out okay let us put a line here and let us just print and let us put a line and let us clear the screen to see so here we've got name pizza lamini age 27 class grade 12 country kingdom of Eswatini. so that is how we use dictionaries okay <clears throat> Okay, now that we have this information, let us try to use this information, the newfound knowledge we have with our with our previous mathematics problem. So a previous mathematics problem we had two two points one comma uh, maybe four comma two and we've got B maybe four comma six. The mission was to calculate the gradient, and we say the gradient. To calculate the gradient, you need to, to to say y2 minus y1 divide x2 minus x1. So when we created a function def grad, let me call it m now m. And then I'm going to say, of course, it is wise to call it gradient. Let me call it gradient, gradient. And I'm going to say, here I'm going to receive x1, y1, and then I'm going to receive x2, y2. And then upon receiving that, I'm going to re return the gradient, which is going to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So now, now that I have the function, let me create the containers for we're going to use a dictionary so now i'm going to say x for the value of x i'm going to put four and for y i'm going to put two and then i'm going to write b the dictionary again I'm going to say for x I'm going to write one and for y I'm going to write six. Okay, let me reverse here. For x I'm supposed to be four. Now that I have this, now I can say m, which is the gradient, gradient, and I can put a and access x and put a again and access y and then put b access s b again again access y and then at the end I'm going to print the gradient gradient m m is equal to that format and then I'm going to put M here so this is how we are going to use the this is how we, we are going to use dictionary dictionaries to calculate the 
or a dictionary to calculate the credit. So let us calculate what we are expecting here. So here M will be my expectation Y2, which is 6. 6 here, we're going to 6 minus Y1, which is 2, divide by X2, which is 2 minus or x2 which is 4 minus uh, x1 which is 4 again so we have got 4 and 4 so yeah I think everything is in order so now 6 minus 2 we're getting 4 divide 4 minus 4 going to zero okay i think we are using okay let us put six here because we cannot divide by zero we're not expecting to get zero let, let me correct this yeah let me put six here so let me correct this here we've corrected in b b we've got six six so now, so 6 minus 4, we're expecting to get 2. Now, 4 divided by 2, we're going to get 2. So this is what we're expecting to get. Okay, now we can print that out. Let us execute this code. So the answer here is 2. Point zero as expected here of course it is a floating point number if you want to we can just change it here or we can just put in here we call this casting and write m here we are still going to get the same answer which is two so the gradient is two as we were expecting this answer so this is how we use dictionaries okay guys stay tuned for our next lesson okay guys welcome back in this lesson we'll be taking a look at comparison operators and if statements and we we'll also take a look at modules okay uh, uh, we've got this types of operators in python i've got the comparison operators greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to equal to not equal to we also have logical operators such as and or or not okay let us see them in usage <clears throat> okay in mathematics when you are taking a look at inequalities, we usually compare numbers. For example, let us say we are given A. A is 2. B is 3. Maybe C is 1. Maybe F is 4. So we can compare these numbers. Let us say you want to print want to check if C is equal to F. Maybe let us print it out. Is C equal to F? So we want the answer. Let me put okay, let us print it out. So we have here the answer is false. Let us print another one. We want to find out if C is not equal to F. Okay, we didn't put it here. 
let us clear so here we have the answer which is true you also want to find out if maybe let us say a is greater than b I want to find out if a is greater than b or maybe vice versa I want to find out if Want to find out if if a is less than b a is less than b so let us print it out we have got a and b maybe to make things more and more interesting maybe let us put the real values here hmm okay let me just write print this is okay yeah i'm going to put greater than and then here i'm going to put this and here i'm going to put the answer so i'm going to say dot format and then i'm going to put a b and then I'm going to test if A is greater than B. I'm going to copy this again. Paste it here. I'm going to test this. And then I'm going to copy it, paste it this. I'm going to test if B, I'm going to test B and F. I just want to check if B is equal to F. Or just check if B is not equal to F b is not equal to f so another thing that i want to check is to check okay here i've got equal we have got not equal and i think everything is in order here let us say maybe we want to check if greater than or equal to and let us put a b and a greater than or equal i think everything is in order and of course there's an error here let me check it format Okay, I didn't put B here. So now I can check if this is less than or equal to. And here A, B. Maybe let me write A here. Less than or equal to B. Now. Let us execute this and let us clear the screen. So here we've got the answers. Two is two greater than four false. Is two less than four true? Is four equal to four true? Is four not equal to four false? Is two greater than or equal to four false? Is two less than or equal is less than or equal to four true? So these are the comparison operators that we have. And the, any, the equality operators we have. Okay, 
Now we have what we call an if statement. Let us say we want to do some operation on A and B only and only if A maybe is greater than B. So the if statement is very simple. What it takes first, it's going to execute this code only so it's going to execute this code maybe let me write print execute this code the first code if this is true if it is not true it's going to execute the second statement or else it's going to execute the second statement and let me copy this and paste it here maybe let me write all this so this is how the if statement works so basically it's an option you choose this one if you don't want this one you choose this one so let us use it so here i want to say if a is greater than b if a is greater than b i want you to execute this maybe i want you to execute this statement oh let me write another one print a is greater than B or else so this is more like the default statement if this is false if this state first statement is false I want you to execute the second one so this is what is going to happen if a is greater than b i'm going to execute this but if it's not greater than b i'm going to execute this a is not greater than b let us execute it so here a is not greater than b so because this statement was false it was it was it was executed the second statement was executed okay another another thing that we want to do is say if maybe f if b maybe is is greater than f i want to say i want you to print So um, this is the first condition I'm checking. B is greater than F. The second thing that I can do, I can say L if L if, which is which is the else if, else if, I want you to check that B. So, what is going to happen? It's going to check the first statement. If it is false, it's going to execute the, the second statement. If it is one is false, it's going to execute the last statement, which is else. So here I'm going to print. Maybe uh, B is equal to F and the last one is going to say or oh, else if both statements if the first statement and the second statement is false so i want you to execute the one the default one so i'm going to say print maybe i don't know or maybe it is not equal, it's not greater than, which means 
it is less than it is less than maybe let me write here b is less than f now let us execute this so clear the screen so here i've got b is equal to f because b here as we, we have seen b and f they are equal i've got four so this statement is true that is why we're able to execute the statement okay now that we know this okay as you can see we can use the comparison operators here by using this symbol so this signs here but here is the let's say you don't like the idea of using these symbols and you want something that uh, people can can understand even if it, they something that is written in english what you can do you can create what we call a module basically a module is a file is a python file that contains related functions for example here these are just comparison maybe co comparison and maybe comparison op of course i'm going to put comparison and equality operators so i'm going to write dot pi so this is going to be my folder which is going to hold all those functions which i'm going to need when i want to compare things so the first one that i'm going to use um, maybe def i'm going to need less than so it's going to take two values x and y and then it's going to check it's going to retain it's going to check if x is less than y if this is true it's going to return true it's going to return a value true or false and another function that we can create def uh, creator then x y and it's going to return x is greater than y it's going to retain true if this is true or false and then def equal to i'm going to check x and y and then I'm going to return maybe I'm going to return true or false if x is equal to y. Another function I can define maybe not equal equal to I can say x take two values and then return x is not equal to y so it's going to return true or false so we can create uh, all those functions or all these operators we have and put them inside this file now that we have this uh, maybe let me create uh, one last def less than or equal to so i'm going to take x y and i'm going to return x is less than or equal to y So now I can use this this function in these modules by here by just importing them. Okay. Let me import them here. 
so what i can do i usually import everything at the top i can say import uh, let me import the name of my file comparison op maybe as op so instead of writing comparison we're going to say this i'm going to write op op stand for comparison op so now instead of using maybe this here for oh let's let us create something new let us comment this this now we can write a new function maybe let us put x is equal, uh, let us assign four and y let us assign maybe seven and then now we can say if maybe want to say if x is less than y this one to want to print maybe want to uh, we want to add these values print the sum print the sum x plus y maybe want to print the sum so instead of using this we can just write the function uh let uh op dot less than so here less than and then i'm going to put x and y and then now maybe let me write else or else i want to subtract print sub x minus y so if this is true if x is less than y i want to execute the first statement if x is is not less than y i want to execute the second statement so let us check uh okay i don't understand why i'm getting an error it's not an error per se let me check it if everything is in order x y oh let me put some red values here let me put three and five and let me execute this okay let me return x and y maybe it was my text editor now let me execute it so here we can see 7 plus 4 we get 11 because this is true because x is less than y maybe let us put 14 here or 34 to see what happens let us execute it so now we, uh, we can see here 34 minus 7 we get 27 so this is how we create modules and input of course uh, and uh, there are many things you need to learn to create a better module but uh, this is the best way or this is the introduction on how to create modules of course now that we know that how to create modules we don't necessarily need to create all these uh, these functions here of course we're going to create them if you want to but what we normally do we go 
we go online to check if there's any module or library that have been created that can help us that contain the functions that we need as things turns out it, it we do have a, a module for that contain comparison operators and you can just import operators maybe let s p so now instead we can just instead of writing this here we can just write maybe p dot wanted less than less uh, okay let me delete this so that we can see p dot so here we can see a lot of functions that you, that can be found inside the uh, this uh, this operator module so less than or equal to less than so this is the, this is the one we're looking for maybe let me put x y and let us execute it to see what happens clear the screen okay let us change maybe so now we get the same answer like we did before so you don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel so this is all we have on this lesson where we were taking a look at creating modules using the comparison and logical operators of course we didn't use logical operators let us use logical operators before i forget okay let us say we've got age maybe this is going to be alex age maybe alex is 12 years so i want to check if alex qualifies to uh, to drink alcohol so we are going to say if age is greater than maybe 18 or let us say is greater than maybe 17 but and the age is less than 18 less than 18 okay age is greater than 17 ah let me not put 17 greater than 10 but less than 18 i want to print don't drink alcohol or else maybe i'm going to say print drink alcohol okay because we have used and and here means this support needs this needs to be true and this needs to be true yeah. so both values needs to be true so that this statement can be executed if any of them is false this statement will never be executed only this statement will be executed let us clear the screen and let us execute to see what happens here it said don't drink alcohol because this statement okay this statement is true and uh, this statement is true let us say let us change this and into or or so only only one of these uh, this needs to be true if if one of them is true then this statement is going to be executed 
it doesn't need to necessarily need to, both of them to be true like and so if one of them is true the statement is going to be executed so let us see what happens uh, let us clear the screen um okay maybe we need to put another different situation or we're going to uh, learn more about the end or and or, or or logical operators in the next lesson okay guys thank you thank you for being with us at, at this lesson please stay tuned for our next lesson hello guys my name is Wankuna Lamini. welcome back uh, to our lesson to our lesson in this lesson we are going to take a look at built-in functions so these are the built-in functions that we are going to take a look at them yeah, I'm going to add some of uh, other functions which are not here as we go on with the lesson. Okay, so as you can see today, we'll be using Spider. Uh, I, this is a text editor that comes with Anaconda. So if you want it, just install Anaconda and you're going to get Spider. Uh, yeah, sure, it's, it's, it's a package that comes with uh, Anaconda. So once you install Anaconda, you're going to get Spider. So, so I made some few modification here. So here we can see this is return workspace. So what I did, I came here and then I renamed the tab workspace. But you don't need necessarily to to rename it. And the one thing I discovered is that if I say print, maybe hello world. Of course, if you want to run, you can just press here or F five. So we have hello world here. And to clear the screen, you can just write clear or write CLS. So here you can clear the screen. So this is what I discovered. I was just, I was just testing it. So now that we are all familiar with Anaconda, we can get started. Okay. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is set. So in our previous lessons, we did take a look at list, dictionaries, and tuples. So the the last data type that is remaining is is set. So to create a set is very simple. You can create a set of prime numbers, maybe prime n, and then we can just write use the same calibrate we use when we are creating dictionaries. And then we can just write maybe prime numbers two, three, five, seven. Ah, uh, let it maybe just write maybe eleven. And then now we can print to see the type print type. And then we can write time n. And then we can print. So we can see here the type is a, it is a set. So it is written here, it is a set. So we can print the set time n. So we have the set here two, three, five, seven, eleven. So uh, this is what we can do with sets. Okay, and uh, let us delete this. And now, so just like in mathematics, you can perform a number of operations in sets. You can do the union, you can do intersection, section, of course, you can find the difference. Uh, and the symmetric difference so there are many functions that are associated with sets uh, so if you're familiar with sets in mathematics you can just search for those functions which uh, you are using in mathematics uh, online and then they're going to show you sets that are used uh, the functions that are associated to, with this uh, with this uh, data type uh, in python so another way of creating a set we can just maybe write, let me write it maybe, um, I don't know, maybe num n, maybe I can write 
uh, set I can use this constructor up here I'm going to write is zero one two three four five see uh, six seven okay here we have five uh, there are two fives here so let us let us see what happens because in under those circumstances in real life situation when you are dealing with sets we are not supposed to have a repeating value so that is what we are going to check here so let us print num and to see if it's still the case here in python so this repeating value under those circumstances we are not supposed to have this so let us see uh, Okay, I need to put uh, brackets here. Brackets here. Uh, not brackets. Uh, okay. Yeah. So now we have this dictionary here. So remember to put it is a this around brackets here. So, as you can see here, we don't have five, we have only one five, but here we had a two, two, we had double five. So, just like in real life situation or in mathematics, we are not, we are not supposed to have uh, repeating values here in a set. So, so uh, this, uh, even if you write repeating values, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, Python is going to take care of it when it realizes that hey, you, are, you are writing sets. So now let us take a look. Let's say you want to make an intersection, maybe intersection or, or the union of prime n and num n. To achieve that, you can just write maybe union val and we can just use num and and we can use a uh, this symbol we can use this symbol to get an union and uh, let me write prime and now i can print that out print union val okay let us print that out Okay, let us clear our screen. CLS. Okay, just right clear and let us press. So here we have the union of these two two sets. Set uh, this prime set, the sets of prime numbers, and this set. So this is the union of these two sets. And here, as you can see, we have only one, two. We, we don't have repeating values here because this is a set. So this is how you can achieve a new. Of course, there is a function that's associated with this. Uh, maybe let us use it. But the shortcut is, is usually the best. Union, maybe val two. And I'm going to say num n dot union. And then I'm going to write prime. And, and maybe uh, here let me just write comma and I'm going to put here I'm going to write uh, union one and let me copy this and write the second one union val 2 so now let us print it out on the screen so as you can see here we can we are getting the same value say you can use it this method or we can just use this symbol now let us take a look at uh, intersections so in mathematics so basically in union uh, assuming that you're familiar with sets in mathematics basically in union we're just combining these two values and we are remove repeating values 
So an intersection, you want the two values that they share here. So here, uh, so here, we just want the, the values which I are, uh, the value which is here in prime n and the value which is here in, in num n. So we want the two values, the, the intersection. So we can achieve that. Maybe let us write interval. And here we can just write uh, prime n and use and symbol and just write num n. And we can print it out. Print and let me say intersection one and i'm going to write inter interval so we can just run so the intersection shows it so as we can see here uh, the values that are uh, in, in 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 these two sets we've got two three five seven these are the common values that we have and we can also use intersection here there's also a function that's associated with this we can just maybe use inter val two and let us write prime n dot inter intersections and just write num n so yeah here we, we're using the symbol and here we're using the function and here we can just print this out again and let us paste this intersection to interval two ah. Three, two, three, five, seven. So we are all we are getting the same values here. So it's up to you which one you prefer. But then as comes as we are going to choose intersection. Why? It is easy to remember the word than the symbol. So because I used to just because you are used to using the word intersection, you're going to choose this one. And it is what you're going to do. And as comes to this. Of course, we can find the difference here. So basically the difference. Uh, here we can find the difference uh, oh, maybe let us use it as div and let's say prime n minus num n and let us print print let me call this the ah uh, let's just call it div we can call it div one div one and let me write something because maybe I'm, i will decide to use the function uh, div one so here and let us clear the screen again So here we can run and you can see div1 is 11. Div1 is 11. So let us see where can we find 11. So here the value which is in prime n but is not in num n is 11. So the difference is that. So we can also maybe find the, uh, there's a function, maybe let me write div2. Div2. And let me write prime and dot difference and then num and and let us print it out. So now and let us write okay. So now we can print it out. So here we've got the same values. 
So and these are the functions which are of course we've got a ton of functions we've got a that associated with sets we've got a remove and we've got a discard and the, there's a difference between remove and discard you can search it online we've got a clear now i'm just naming a few and we've got a, a empty so these are the functions that you these are the basic one which maybe you're going to learn so yeah so uh yeah there are many functions that are with sets here and maybe and we are going to use some of them as we continue the lesson where we need them of course the best way to learn is by doing so we're going to have a problem next time and we are going to maybe need sets so we're going to use uh, this uh, uh, the functions which we haven't mentioned here so now let's take a look at those building functions which we are uh, we're talking about now we're gonna take a look at the built-in functions of uh... okay let us take a look at the, the, the built-in functions okay imagine we are given let's say the following uh, list of numbers numbers and let's say we are given one two three four five six just like before in your in, in in lesson one we were looking at the these numbers one two three four five six as a list and you were basically squaring them so we had the dysfunction f of x uh, of course a uh, f of x we had the, this one re and then we returned x maybe x times x and we had other functions such as uh, def uh, g of x and uh, we did return something like this x plus 2 so what we did with this function is that where actually this was a we called it, it a, the domain values let's say you wanted to plot it domain numbers and we wanted to print out the the range numbers the range numbers of values let us call it values and let us call it values here range values and basically wanted to create a, a a list of range values such that at the end we can plot this a, a, maybe in a graph so what we did last time is we created an empty array and then we loop, we looped through the the function using the for loop for i for i we looked through the domain values for i in range uh, in domain values we look through the domain values and then we returned or, or we we what we did is that uh, we we say the range we use this function range values with this list range values range values and then we appended the the end result of executing we we, we use this function f and uh, we can use the first one or we can use the second one let us use f maybe we want to square these numbers we want to create a, a new new list of domain values or of range values that uh, uh, is a square of the of the of the domain value so we are going to put uh, 
uh, i inside this function this is what we did in lesson one so uh, at the end we're able to print the new list print range values this is the new list that we're going to get after scoring them so here we've got x times x basically and this value is going to say one times one and it's going to give us one two times two is going to give us four three times three nine four times four sixteen five times five twenty five six times six thirty six so that is what we're expecting let us execute it so now we have the range values this is the output so we have domain values and the uh, the range values of course we can print this out if you want to uh, uh, let us not print it out right now. Okay, this is what uh, we did. We can achieve the same thing. This we can achieve the, the same thing using this built-in function called map. So we can achieve this using uh, this built-in function called map. Actually, let us use it. So what you want here. We want to return range values, which is the square of the domain values. What we can do, we can just write here. Maybe the first thing, because we want to return this, we're going to write a list. And then we're going to put the map here, the map function and open brackets. What the map function take a, a function and then an interval. So the function is going to do some operation into it's going to do some operation into the iterable and then return a new iterable that uh, uh, maybe is is this uh, is this uh, the squared new iterable so now we can put f here which is the function here and we can put this domain values domain values so the domain values here is going to do the same thing which we were doing last time. It's going to square each number. This function is going to be executed and then uh, it's going to be returned here as a map. And then the map, we're going to put it inside the list. And then we're going to do, going to return uh, this, uh, this new function, this new list. So let us print this to see the new outcome. And let us print range values range values and let us print it out so as you can see we are getting the same output like uh, before so this is the bit of the map function so uh, in light of this new uh, new knowledge that we have this means that uh, now we can use this uh, concept of for uh, of anonymous uh, function basically uh, to create an anonymous function is very easy and uh, let's make all these range values too before we do that maybe let us put g here and let us print uh, this range values two after putting g and let us clear the screen and let us print it out oh okay here there's an error range values okay range value two okay let us clear the screen cls and let us run again so now we can see that now we we were adding two in into these domain values we're adding two so two plus uh, one plus two is going to give us three two plus two is going to give us four and then so on and so on and so on so as you can see we're able to use even this function uh, using this map function so okay so let us take a look at anonymous function let us say maybe instead of creating this function this way we can just create an anonymous function anonymous function is basically a function without a name it is why we call it anonymous function okay and to create an anonymous function is very easy you can just write print here 
basic card you can say lambda we call it lambda function if we want to put x here and then x x squared uh, which means the uh, x times x so let us put it in brackets and then maybe let us put a, a value maybe here two so now two is going to be inserted into two is going to be set into inside x and then it's going to be executed as x times and then it's going to be returned so this function doesn't have a name so we can execute it here that is the beauty of it so here we have four ah maybe let us put a three and the one good thing about it is uh, maybe you can name give it an mg and then say lambda 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 maybe x we don't need to put the return value maybe x plus 2 so we can write it this way this is an anonymous function so now that we have that we can use which you can instead of writing take writing this function here and then inserting it in here we can just say uh, put the lambda function inside here we can just write lambda lambda maybe x and this time i want to say x maybe plus three okay let us print this output print range of values uh, uh let us call it values three values three <clears throat> so now let us clear the screen and let us run so we can see here we're adding three plus uh, one give us four and then uh, oh i'm using this so we have the domain here let me copy it we've got the domain here i'm going to comment it uh, so we've got here three plus one it gives us four two plus three five six seven eight nine of course uh, uh, this has this leads us to this uh, function uh, which we mentioned the, uh, the the zip function this has leads lead us to the zip function basically the zip function uh, it's more like a creating a, a tuple. Uh, let me illustrate this. Let's say you have a maybe list, uh, maybe user info, and we've got uh, the list of user info. We've got uh, maybe we want from the user, we want the user to give us a name, and then we also want the user to give us the he his age we also want the user to give us maybe a he his city and maybe we want the user to give us his country and then now we are going to have a maybe the list of list and user so here we've got the the, the user maybe this is going to we are going to call this a uh, user one and here we've got a uh, pizza flamini and then the country is the city uh, the country is the city is mbabane mbabane and then we have uh, the country is uh, swaziland so so what we have here 
we have this information this information is separated we've got this information and uh, imagine that you we would love to see this in a form of a dictionary like this maybe user info machine and what you want really is this we want to see the name maybe the name and we want to see maybe alex masego and we want to see something like this for the country or the age oh i didn't put the age here uh, let me put the h h okay for the age and we are expecting maybe alex is 23 and then for the city and the maybe um babane and then for the country maybe we're expecting uh, of course it's swazident okay the string or oh, maybe let us use a swatini a swatini so what we want really is we want to create a dictionary we don't want this information to be separated and uh, what advantage that comes to the dictionary is that now we can just <coughs> use these key value pairs if you want a name maybe you can just write print and uh, user information and then put this and then put name here the case name so now we can get the name here uh, this makes our job very very easy so of course the name alex Masego. so what we, we want is is to create something like this so we can achieve the the same thing by using this function called z so we did use it in the past and what we can do maybe you can say user info maybe combined and then we are going to put zip so what it does it takes two uh, uh, two iterables so it it takes two iterables and combine them to form uh, to uh, into a tuple to form a tuple inside a list so maybe let us do it so that we can see it so now we can put a list uh, uh, list user info and then we can put list user one and now let us print to see what we are getting print user info combine let us print it okay let us clear the screen and let us run this okay uh, let us put this into a list so that we can see uh, uh, what we are getting and uh, what i'm going to do mm, let me put it inside it like this and then i'm going to write a list and then let me put this and now i'm going to execute this again so now we have uh, we can see what we are getting here we are we are, we are getting what we are expecting so it, it changed this into a list of uh, into a list of tuples so we have a list of tuples here as you can see here we've got for name we've got the bizarre time in the age we've got this uh, we've got 27 so now we can achieve our main objective maybe we wanted a dictionary we can just put a dick here dick 
へえー let's put dick so now we can just put a dick here and let us clear the screen so now we have a dictionary uh, addition is a list of key value pairs so now we have a dictionary here so we're able to achieve our, our objective by using this function called zip so the, that's how we use the functions so now we can print this information out like for maybe for k for key and value for v k v in user combine dot items so maybe before we do this let us print this out because i i didn't really explain this in the past dick funk this dick function and let us see what it, it, it gave us so that we can understand it better let us print it out before print dick funk and then let us print it out so what did this really give us it give us a, a it give us a a a, a a tuple and a list of tuples inside the a list of tuples yeah it's good it give us a list of tuples so we can say the square brackets for list uh, and this uh, and here we've got tuples here so this is what it give us basically and uh, it 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 it's it it, it's more like it is related to this concept of zip so uh, it is related to this concept of zip or this function zip so that is what it gives us that is why when we are printing this we, we need two values because we are iterating basically inside the uh, a list which contain tuples so that is why we say for k v in items uh, for kv in the let me just use the bank instead of doing the same thing and then i'm going to print and then i will have the first one and then i will have the second one here maybe format format okay so here i've got k and v let us print it out let us clear the screen and let us print it out so now we can see name visa i mean age 27c timbabane country source or maybe let us make it more nicely by putting this and let us clear the screen again so this is what we have got name visa i mean age 27 city mbabane country swaziland swaziland so this is what we have so now that we have uh, this actually because now we are familiar with this uh, uh, with the with the zip we can now instead of maybe uh, putting this into a uh, zip and then then putting it into a dictionary uh let us try something interesting let us say because we have seen what it it, it returns basically it returns, it's more like we are using user user info combined items using this so if you can put it in, into inside the list 
we can be able to iterate over it. So now what we can do, we can say for maybe k v key value pairs in and then write a list and then zip. So I'm, I'm going to create a, a pair of these two. Um, so I'm going to say uh, domain domain values and then I'm going to say range values maybe let me use the range values 3 let us say, uh, let us finish this so that we can see the range values let us print and then we're going to take this map onto we're going to take this and then we're going to say format and then we are going to put k and v so now basically what we are executing we are executing these range values and the domain values here the one which we have inserted here so we're expecting to get uh, uh, the uh, uh, the output which he, uh, has the uh, it, it that has these operations so let us print it out uh, let us clear the screen and let us print so here we've got uh, map let us write the function on top uh, print print the function which we are printing is maybe f of x f of x uh, is equal to x plus 3 and so f of x so here we've got x plus 3 could get 4 2 plus 3 5 3 plus 3 6 4 plus 3 7 5 plus 3 8 6 plus 3 is 9 so now having this uh, newfound knowledge let us do something interesting so now we had basically what we have here is this range function this range function we're able to create it using uh, this why don't we just uh, maybe take this and put it inside the that function like this that uh, loop uh, instead of putting it in, into this container let us copy it why don't we just take it? Maybe let me say for for k v in uh, list open brackets zip and then write domain values and then domain values and then a comma and then just put this so now what i can do i can maybe change this function this anonymous function x times x so we have this and then now what I can do, I can just print this out. Uh, let me copy this to save time. Put this and then let me print this out. Uh, before I do that, let me write this function print F of x 
is x times x. So this is the function that, uh, that we have here. Let us print it out to see what happens. Clear the screen and let us run. So now we have one times one is one, two times two is four. So as we can see, we can uh, we can do this instead of wasting time creating a new container. We can just do this if we want. To, we are expecting to get this. We want to to get something like this. Okay. Okay. Now. So. Now we're able to use this. Uh, uh, let us go back to the map function that we were using here. So what we're doing here, we're basically, we wanted to change these domain values. The domain values that we just hand, hand coded, uh, right, uh, hand coded. We want to, we wanted to perform a function or you know, to do some computation into it maybe here in this case the sum x plus 3 or which means the first value plus 3 the second value plus 3 you see so on and so on so as things turns out it's it, we can achieve the same thing without using map just in case you're wondering so using map map and using map we're writing like this of course we wanted to put our into a list our output into a list we said map and then we use the lambda function lambda lambda and then we performed some lambda and then we performed some operations here maybe x plus one uh, into these values, domain values, uh, domain values. So we're able to get this output print, and let me write map map n, and let me write print here. print and then for slash what uh, n what n uh, for slash n is just is giving you a new line so I want to put some new some space here so now let me clear the screen let me print this out So we're able to get this output. Okay. As things turns out, we don't necessarily need to use map to achieve this. We can achieve this just using for uh, the for loop. So for loop list a uh, uh, for loop let's me call it for loop map and of course uh, you can just put it in square brackets instead of writing this here and then maybe we wanted just x plus wanted to say x x plus one four maybe for x in domain values so let us print this out to see the output print maybe this is for loop map and let us print this out for for loop map so and here uh, let us write something here so that we can see map map n okay let us print this out
OK. And let me clear the screen. So now, uh, for for loop map, we have the same output. As you can see, we have the same output. So we didn't necessarily need this map. Of course, knowing it comes in handy, more especially if you want to do what they, they call it, functional programming. So we can achieve the same thing. And uh, in, in one textbook, which uh, I learned this concept, uh, so I find out that this the using the for for in this is using the for loop is, is faster than using map. Of course, you can just search it online and find out more. So now we had the this dilemma of writing domain values. So instead of hard coding domain values from one to six, why don't we use the range function? So that is one of the built-in function, the range function. And we are familiar with it. We were using it in previous lessons when we were for maybe for i in range. We wanted to count maybe from 1 to 10. Maybe 1 to 10. And we did something like this. Print. Print i. So we did something like this. Basically, we said it take a three inputs. So it takes three inputs and uh, you can put maybe one to uh, leap by two but let us focus in, in uh, on these two then we're going to put so the first input uh, we are going to put one if you don't put one uh, by default is zero and here we're going to put 10 and the last input is going to be yeah it's one if you don't if you don't put anything it's one by default so we're able to print something like this let us run this so here we have one to t uh, oh if you want to go from one to ten we just need it maybe to put eleven let us clear the screen so here we've got one to ten of course if you want to uh, you can put it maybe two here so let us print it to see the output so here say one two three three four five five six seven so as you can see it is moving two steps yeah so and then seven eight nine so this is how we learned how uh, this is this, this was the first time when we familiarize we familiarize ourselves with the, the range function now that we know the range function exists as things turns out we can just instead of cut coding one to six we can just use the this range just to uh, range here so domain values stand for this uh, basically these values one two three four five six so it stands for this uh, these elements so it stands for a list so now let us print this out so we are still getting the same thing so we can use the range function maybe putting it in because we want a list we can just write a list and then put a range maybe one two six and let us see the input oh before before we execute it here, ah, let us execute it here to see what happens. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, we're adding one. Yeah, I think everything is in order. Adding one, getting two, one, three, four, five. Hmm. Okay, it doesn't include the the last digit. Maybe let us put seven here because one to, from one to six. And let us execute again. Yeah. Or maybe let us change this function to just generate square numbers. Uh not this one. 
one to seven and the data has changed this function to generate the square numbers okay so now we're able to get square numbers from one to six so as you can see we can use this uh, range range function and combine it with the list so this is how you can use the zip range uh, list map now let us take a look at some interesting functions so now that we know about the range function we can just create something like this like print like a list maybe and <clears throat> uh, let me say um now um, let me just write numbers n and then I'm going to say put it put here and then range 1 to 11 of course 1 to 10 and let me print this out so that I can see what oh, list n and then let me clear the screen And then so we can see how it is written here of course if you want to maybe for uh, maybe for X in array in, in range uh, for x in range and let us put x here for x in range let us print it again to see the output so now we are getting the list of numbers from 1 to 10 so we have unpacked this so this is how we, okay what I wanted was to use this to teach you other built-in functions. So the built-in function that I want to take a look is to find the minimum value. To find the minimum the minimum value, we can just write. Uh, let me write min, and then of course it takes a tuple min val minimum val. Just write min and then open brackets. It takes a list, it, take, it takes iterables. So here I can just write a list n. So I'm going to get the minimum value. Of course, to get the maximum value, I can just write, let me write max. And here, just write max. Of course, I can sum all those values in a, uh, in a list I can just say uh, sum and what I can do another thing ah, let me use only these functions and let me print it, uh, them out. so what does these functions takes a, a list a list values and it's going to get uh, the maximum values in in the list uh, here we've got the list of 1 to 10 and it's going to get uh, the minimum values and it's going to sum all those digits uh, from 1 to 10 give us the number let us print it out so the minimum value is 1 here we've got the smallest value is 1 the maximum value the biggest value is five and uh, let me maybe print it a list here so that we can print list and uh, so we have the list here maybe let me write list and so that you can see uh, list and okay 
and let us let us execute this so i've got list n i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten values from one to ten so the minimum value here is one the smallest value from from this n is one the maximum value the biggest value is 10 and you've got a oh i forgot to write sum here you've got the sum and the sum is 55 so i've got the sum is 55. so these are some of the functions that are associated with the or which are built in functions okay um another built-in function that i want us to take a look at look at is this one this function instance and we can use it let's say we've got a and we assigned 12 here maybe b we assign 13. Uh, of course we, we are uh, we are putting it in, in single quotes which make makes it a string so we can use to check if a is an integer maybe we want to compute the sum of 13 and 12 only only and only and only if both of these values are integers so maybe you can say if uh, a uh, no if is instance and here the object is a and then we are going to put a here uh, if a is a an int if a is an int what you want if a is an int and uh, is instance and if b is an int we want if b is an int we want to compute maybe the sum print of course we can use this function that we've learned sum and then uh, we know that comma separated values uh, uh, by putting comma separated values uh, it, it makes them a, a tuple what we can do maybe you can just put a uh, uh, them in a list a and b so this is going to treat a and b as a list and it's going to sum them a and b is going to, we are going to get the sum so we can use this function we don't need to add code a new function because we already have the sum so if this is true i want to execute this or else i want to say print and i want to say check your values if they are ints they are integers integers so what we say here if a is an instance of an int and if b is an instance of a of an int we want to execute this but if it's not we want to execute this so let us execute this okay let us maybe for starters let us just put a correct number 13 and let us execute this maybe let me put print okay. in line in line hold on okay let me execute this so now we have 25 so 3 plus 2 we get 5 1 plus 3 plus 2 we get 5 1 plus 1 we get uh, 20 22 so yeah 
as you can see, yeah, the spider is very interesting. So as you can see, it's telling us, ah, this is an int. And uh, yeah, so you can learn a lot by using spider. Okay. Okay, let us maybe let us now change this. Uh, let us put this in in double quotes in, or in, uh, change it into a string. Now let us execute this if, to see if we are getting. So now we, we they say th this statement is executed or this print function is executed. Check your values if they are integers. So an inst instance is one way of Python of checking if a this a, a, a variable is a is a is a string or an int. Actually, you can put a, any of the types which we have learned about and to check if a, something is a is a, is is of the data. But maybe you can you want to check uh, if this is a string. I want to execute this. If this is a, not a string, I want to do this. So. Of course, I've been searching for this in, in one language is C++ and the uh, as things turns out, it is difficult to, to do the same thing in C++. Uh, so that is what makes Python interesting. Okay. Mm. So this is the function which I wanted to twilight. Another interesting function that we have where the, the uh, the div mode div uh, div mode the div mode function it takes two values the first value is going to be so it takes two values the div mode so here we can see it takes two values the, the first value here as you can see it, it stands for the true division so it's going to return a tuple as it is written here. It's going to return a tuple. The, the first value is or oh, the first value is not is going to be the the uh, the division and uh, not the true division. So before we do that, let us take a look at these two types of division we have in Python. In Python, if we want to get maybe and uh, let us say let us put a g and let us put the in and the edge let us put two of course we know that when you divide it in by two we are going to get a number that contains a decimal point we can just compute this uh, maybe this is right true div maybe true value and then we are going to say g g divide by 2 and uh, divide by h and here we can print it out true div so here this is going to give you a true div basically it's going to give you the exact answer which you you're supposed to get uh, when we are using when you are dividing uh, using a calculator but this division uh, print uh, and I'm going to get it, call it false div but it's not false div but uh, let me call it a cut div because it seems like it is cutting cut div and then I'm going to say the din uh, g and you are going to put a we are going to double the division sign and then h and then i'm going to print a cut div so i'm going to write cut cut div Or maybe let us just write something and, and let us say this divide by this is going to give us this and then put format here format and let's put g h 
and then show value and let us copy this and paste it here and then right here cut it so now let us print this out to see the output so let us run so as you can see here we're, we're getting a number let me put a, a, a double division sign here let us run again as you can see we're getting a number with the decimal point and here after the decimal point in the second operation the the five is is cut or is removed it's not even round up it's just cut cut or or round down i don't know why but they call this the first one true division and it is the one which i've called a i've entered with false division or cut division okay so there are two ways of debating if you want to get a number the exact value you can use you can use the first one the true division and if you don't want to get the exact value you can use this uh, second one so what happens really uh, now we can come back to our original dilemma so here in dc we said we, we are using uh, div mode we're getting the answer of division without decimal point and then we are getting the other one the first one is going to be the first value you get uh, when dividing uh, uh, two numbers uh, and the second one is going to be the remainder basically what we are going to get we are going to get a tuple so okay let us use the the thief mode function more funny basically here we have we have this which i have entirely uh, we've got this true value which is the true div and we've got this value which i've called it the cut div basically in, in, in the in this form of division uh, the decimal the number after the decimal point is cut is not even round up is cut or is removed and the, only the first digit is taken the number before the the decimal so here it gives you the the all all the answer even including the decimal the number after the decimal so we can just print it out here and uh, cut div So here we've got 6.5 and here we've got 6. Oh, let me put it this sign. So we've got uh, here 6. So the true div, who, uh, using the true div is, is very easy. It gives you the uh, the answer for the this cut div and it also gives you the, the, the number after the decimal. So it gives you the, the value or the remainder. So it gives you the remainder. So let us use the true div. Okay, that, uh, the uh, true div is going to return a tuple. Maybe we are going to say the first value is the, we are going to get the answer for division. The second value is going to get the, the mod. And we are going to receive, we are going to put it, we are going to unpack them. Those values M. And we're going to say a div mod and uh, we're going to say so we'll be dividing 13 by by 2 13 by 2 so 13 divided by 2 uh, 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 we're expecting to get 6 and the remainder is going to be 1 so we can print that out print maybe a M. Uh, so let me say div and then I'm going to put the value here and just say mod and then I'm going to put the value here and I'm, let me put format 
format input a p uh, d m so let us print it that out so here we've got a div six we've got mod one mod is the remainder and six is the answer you get from division so of course if you were finding the modulus of 13 we're going to say print 13 modulus 2 so we're expecting the answer to be 1 So the answer is one as expected. So that is how we use the div mode function. An important function is the absolute, the function for getting the absolute value. To understand it, let us let us import the math module math. And under normal circumstances, we are asked to find print math the square root of square root square root maybe of negative 5 or negative negative 4 of course squaring a negative number is going to give you an error it's not allowed let us do that to see what happens so here we're getting value error so it's not allowed to square a negative number that is why we put this which we change it into an absolute value an absolute value is a number that it does not have a, a that is positive that is not negative so now we have corrected the problem by using this built-in function absolute so now we have a square root of 4 is 2.0 or is 2 just 2 so another important function we've got the um, okay we've got this function let us say we have Mm, we have a list list uh, new val and we've got one two three four five five so we can change this list into an iterable by just saying so you can change this list into of course it is an iterable it is an, it, this list is an iterable but what we can do for us to use this function next we need to name this function iterable so what we can do we can say it and then eta and then list new val this is the eta function it is a built-in function and then we can say print maybe next it so let me just print here line so now we can run this so we are getting one and let's just print it again let us print this print this print this print this print this one two three four five six okay let us run this of course let us run it again so here we've got one two three four five if i try to print the last value it's going to give me an error the one which we obtained the last time stop iteration i'm going to learn more about this when you are handling error and exception so when you are building it integrating this eta far eta function in a class in subsequent lessons so what it does it, the eta change this list in, into an in iterable then now we can use an we can use it this function with uh, with the next 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 
and we are going to see more usage of these when you're learning about generators in the following lessons so that is how we use the intervention and expansion <clears throat> okay of course we have the input function and we are going to see its usage input as we go on with the lesson and we've got to the basically this one is for getting user input so another day we've got a sorted function sorted we've got filter so these are the functions which you won't touch in this lesson but we're going to see them as we continue with the our lessons okay thank you everyone for this lesson please stay tuned for lesson three this is the end of lesson